Hello, I'm Robert Birch, owner of Robert Birch Gallery Limited, operating as Birch Contemporary. I've been exhibiting international and Canadian contemporary art since 1989. And we are here today to discuss a very particular body of work by an Estonian artist, uh, Jan Poldas. Uh, I met, well, actually, I didn't meet Jan Poldas, but I, I was introduced to his work in 1992 when part of my business was a picture framing company and a client had brought in uh, two bodies of works by two uh, local artists, uh, Rick Evans and Jan Poldas. And uh, I loved the Jan Poldas studies. Um, so the, the client asked me if I would trade my framing services for um, a study. And I said, sure, I'd love one of these Poldas works. And he said, well, no, I will give you one of these other artists works. And I jokingly said, no, you can pay for your own framing. And uh, the client thought that was really funny. So he uh, called Jan Poldas and let him know that story. A couple weeks later, Jan called me and asked me if I'd be interested in buying one of his paintings. Of course, I said yes. Um, however, it was coming from a private collector who was moving to Miami and it was the recession of the early 90s and I didn't have enough money. So luckily my accountant saw the value in the work uh, as I, did I and we paired up and bought the work uh, together. And that uh, led me down the path of my, um, my uh, desire to work with Jan Poldas on a more uh, permanent basis. Uh, Jan was showing with a very well-known gallery here in Toronto all through the 80s and early 90s. Unfortunately, the recession uh, forced that gallery to close. And I would ingratiate myself to Jan by going to his local drinking establishment and try to um, ingratiate myself to him by uh, drinking him under the table, which uh, was a difficult task. However, um, Jan uh, finally invited me to the studio. Um, but I think he secretly knew my gallery was too small for him at that time. Uh, I had a small storefront space in the east end of the city, and he was used to a very large gallery space uh, in the central core of downtown Toronto. So I did lose that battle, and he did show with another well-established gallery in 1997 and 1998. This body of work is, that we're going to discuss is from 1997. It's called 12 Color Pair. And it was the last time Jan showed in a commercial setting for 13 years. And during that time, it, I would uh, uh, call Jan at the bequest of a mutual friend. The, the, the person who introduced me to Jan's work in 1992 uh, would ask me to call Jan every so often to try to get him to show again. So starting in 1999, yeah, 1999 I would call Jan and leave a message asking if we could get together and possibly do an exhibition. I would do that every three, six, nine months for the ensuing 12 years. Jan never returned any of my calls. Then in 2009 or 2008, I had this brilliant idea. We would put him in a group show and try to coax him out of uh, his reclusiveness at that time. So I called him and left him a message, hoping that he would call me back, saying that, Jan, we're going to put you in a group show. Um, and for once, he finally called me back and said he's not interested. He doesn't have any works. He hasn't been painting for years, doesn't have any work available from previous years. He does not want to be in the group show. So finally, I uh, got a return phone call from him. I was not going to leave it at that. So I decided that we would put him in a group show against his wishes. And I called him out of respect and said that he would be in the show regardless of whether he had works available. I was borrowing works back from private collectors. They would not be for sale, but we wanted to show people 13 years later what we've been missing. So we put his work into this group show. And one day I was sitting in my office and I heard the front door open and I peeked out of the office and I saw Jan standing in front of his paintings. And I thought, great. So I went and stood beside him. Seemed like hours standing there looking at his paintings, not saying anything. And finally, he says, damn, I'm a good painter. And I said, yes, you are. When can we do a show? And he reiterated the fact that he had no works available. He hadn't been painting in years, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I forget how we left the conversation. He, he left the building. I sat down. It was great reconnecting with him. 
and thought nothing of it until about three months later, he called and said, I have a new body of work. Would you like to see it? I think I was at his studio door before the phone was hung up on the receiver. And that was the beginning of a great working relationship. Uh, we worked together for eight years before he passed away in 2018. So this exhibition, 12 Color Pairs, 1997, is revisiting the body of work that was his last body of work seen before he disappeared from the Canadian art world for 13 years. So the pair of painting behind me is an example of the 12 Color Pairs series in which the artist was interested in how people subconsciously pick out particular colors first and second and third and so forth. Um, however, based on his game, each painting had to reflect the other painting in which if the color on the far left was a dark blue, then the color on the far right had to be as dark as the blue, but a different color and so on and so forth. So the color next to the blue is a medium green and the color next to the burgundy had to be a medium color of some other sort. And in this case, he would allow his personal aesthetic dictate the first half of the painting, but then he had to match the second half of the painting with colors of the same tonality, but different hues. Um, and then when the paintings were done, he wouldn't tell you which one was created first and you could hang them in any order, but they, they still matched as a pair. And you could only purchase them as a pair, you couldn't just have one painting. He also didn't dictate whether the paintings had to hang side by side, but was fine with the paintings hanging in the same room and across from each other, um, just had to be somehow visible at the same time. Jan was a very well-established painter, even in 1997 when he disappeared from the community for 13 years. His works were collected by the Art Gallery of Ontario, by the National Gallery of Canada, by the Canada Council Art Bank. Every major law firm in Toronto and Calgary owned his works, as did uh, many important private collections. Uh, part of the reason Jan disappeared in 1998 was this uh, sinking feeling that nobody was interested in his work, that nobody was buying his work. And it turns out that that wasn't the case. It was just that his dealer had stopped paying him for sales, giving him the impression that nobody was buying his work. Uh, so that compounded with um, depression a lot of artists feel and a recession. Um, a, he, he filed personal bankruptcy. He went through a divorce. He just felt like he wasn't connecting with people, so he pulled out of the art community. That was the one thing he felt he could control. He felt he was misunderstood anyway, so he just stopped exhibiting. But he was very well liked, very well respected by many, many people, and that was evidenced by his 2010 exhibition, which we put together um, after many years of contacting him. Um, when we hung the show on a Wednesday, the opening reception was on the Saturday. Jan showed up for the exhibition opening and asked how the, the works were being received. And we were uh, thrilled to be able to tell him the show was completely sold out before it even opened. And he was thrilled. Um, he then continued painting at a furious pace and uh, gave us new body of work after new body of work, and they kept selling it no matter how much we raised the prices. And at one point he paid me probably the highest compliment I've ever had. He was worried that he was, um, had to keep me happy because he was in the happiest place of, that he'd ever been in. He was a full-time painter, getting paid for his works, and the works were selling very quickly and to important people. So that was a great compliment for me. and. Uh, I was always worried about making him happy. So it was a great uh, reciprocal relationship. Um, unfortunately, he passed away in 2018. Uh, one of the other highlights of our working together with Jan was he was asked to do a commission for a Mies van der Rohe tower in downtown Toronto. Having been trained as an architect and being a fan of Mies van der Rohe, he was thrilled to be asked to create four paintings for this building. 
uh, so much so that he literally went down to the building and measured all the floor tiles and the wall tiles, the, how big the spaces were, how high the ceilings were, and um, catered the paintings and the compositions to have the same feel and flavor of a Mies van der Rohe building. And the client was also thrilled. It's one of the best examples of um, commissioned works in, in the downtown core, in my opinion. Unbeknownst to me, Jan was also exhibiting internationally. He had uh, a couple of works chosen for a museum in Estonia, uh, an exhibition about Estonians who lived abroad. Um, and the museum ended up purchasing one of those paintings, which was fantastic. This exhibition, uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, brings together four examples of the 12 sets of paintings he painted in 1997. One of, the paint, one of the pairs of paintings was lost in 1997 or 1998. Uh, the artist must have destroyed it. And then uh, probably a decade later, one of his galleries disposed of a pair of paintings because they couldn't reach the artist. So in actuality, there are now only 10 pairs of paintings. We know where, I think we know where seven pairs are. Four here, one's in Florida. Uh, one is with the artist's widow. Uh, one is with a, a great local collector, but we're still looking for the remaining pairs.